Hey people, MeshBrush 1.2 is almost done now, and I thought it would be a good idea to create a video at this point, to show off what has changed since the last versions. First of all, I was able to optimize the editor's performance a lot, by finding different ways of doing the painting algorithms. Uh, but don't be scared, nothing has changed from the functionality's point of view, so... Um, meaning MeshBrush behaves exactly the same as it did before. So, the editor's performance has improved. But what about that runtime thing you people have requested so much, you ask? Well, we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. Let's talk about the new stuff in the editor's mesh brush. Right here in the inspector view, you can see that there is a new group foldout called slopes. This slopes group groups everything together that has to do with mesh painting onto steep slopes and hills. But before we start, I'd like to show you this completely useless string field I added in the inspector of each mesh brush instance. <laughs> Jokes apart, uh, this string, as for now, really, it does not do a lot, except for helping you organize and group your mesh painting sets better. For instance, I called this one Terrain Slope Filter Testing, and this other one Cubes Group 1, so you can set this to anything you want. I figured that this would be useful to name your various painting sets, so in a real scenario you could have something like a rocks group or a small medium sized bushes group. This way it's easier for you to see which set paints which meshes. Then finally you would only have to set your brush color to something you will remember later in the process of creating your awesome sceneries. And you have yourself a nice mesh painting setup. Anyway. So about that slope filter suggestion I got from one of you from the community. There is now the possibility to define a maximum angle in the inspector view, below or above which no meshes may be painted. Let me just show you this quickly. So here I'm setting the angle to something like 20 degrees. And as you can see, as I paint my meshes onto this horribly raw terrain topology, you can notice how the meshes only get placed onto those flat areas. Everything else that is either above the threshold angle of 20 degrees or simply upside down or not aligned with the terrain plane gets filtered out. But the slope filter's functionality doesn't end there. For example, you can choose to invert the slope filter there through this toggle here and therefore paint meshes exclusively onto slopes. You'll have to fiddle around a bit with these settings here, to really get a feeling for what they do. There is a problem with this filtering technique though. Let me just quickly demonstrate this to you. Let's navigate over to this weird asteroid thing here. And activate the slope filter. And let's say we wanted to paint meshes only on this surface here. Uh, let's say this one. And we want to filter out the rest. Right now, only by painting the meshes, you can see that MeshBrush still thinks that we are painting onto a flat terrain, and therefore only paints meshes onto the top side here. But that is not quite the result we were expecting from the slope filter on this specific mesh. The reason why this is happening is the arbitrary topology of the mesh. So how do we solve this problem? Well, only by setting the angle value this is not possible. So I came up with this nifty little vector sampling mode here. You'll have to activate this toggle here to allow the manual sampling of reference vectors and then click on this button. We are now in the vector sampling mode. In this mode you can see that your regular circle brush has gone poof and instead of it there is an arrow that points away from your mesh topology. This arrow represents the normal vector that the slope filter will use as a reference to filter out the placement of meshes, instead of the world's y-up axis. To sample a vector, press your paint button. The sampled reference vector will now show up at that location. Now, if I paint meshes here, you can see how they only get placed onto anything that is within the defined range of the maximum slope filter angle. By the way, if you want to disable that handle arrow of the sample vector, you can just turn it off with this toggle over here. Let's get back to the terrain here. Yeah. Let's 
combine this. As you can see, uh, this is the performance gain I was talking about before. Before, in the previous versions of MeshBrush, when you pressed the Combine Painted Meshes button, uh, there was a slight hiccup, a slight snapping, whereas now it almost instantly combines them. So let's talk about that mesh brush at runtime feature you guys wanted so bad. Um, you wanted it, you get it. Uh, well, somehow. <laughs> but actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna create another video on that separately. So make sure to check it out in my channel as well. So that's it, mesh brush 1.2 guys. It should be available for download around next week and it'll obviously be free for all those who already own a copy of MeshBrush. And for everybody else it's 10 bucks on the asset store. Go grab it and start creating some awesome looking maps and sceneries. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Cheers.